Bardman Animation's Bristol Studios have just completed their most ambitious project. With a budget of £1.3 million and a workforce of up to 40 people, this film is set to be Wallace and Gromit's biggest adventure yet. Geronimo! A Close Shave is the third in director Nick Park's Wallace and Gromit trilogy. During its production, he and co-producer Carla Shelley have been responsible for coordinating a wide range of skills and resources. How does it compare with Nick's previous films? Roll Trousers was a, a thriller, um, more or less. This one is more, it's got the thrillerness to it, but it's also melodrama and a bit of action, adventure, Indiana Jones, British war romance. movie. All and the big romance. It's got everything. So. All thrown in. And, and trying to keep the trying to keep the homeliness and endearingness of Wallace and Gromit there at the same time. It's not long before Wallace becomes enamoured of one of his window-cleaning clients, the lovely proprietress of the local wool shop. Ramsbottom. Wendelene Ramsbottom. <gasps> oh. Visually, she looks like uh, Wallace with a wig on. The script describes her as um, a, a rare beauty and... and <laughs> You just have to look at her to know that. <laughs> Wallace finds her mesmerising and attractive and um, falls head over heels for her straight away. We've decided to create a new villain and this time it turns out to be Wendelene's own pet dog, Preston. Preston's quite sinister and he's a rather butch dog. But, uh, it, but really, he's... The, Wendelin's factotum and servant, but he's actually in control. Suffice it to say that our two heroes are drawn into a sinister intrigue involving sheep napping and Preston's fiendish plans to turn the knittomatic into a mutton mincer. As in his previous films, Nick and the team have worked frame by frame with meticulous care, building them into exciting action sequences. In The Wrong Trousers, the crew was about 10 or 12 people, and there were basically two of us doing all the animation. In a close shave, the crew got bigger, um, so that you know there was about 30 of us all together on the studio floor and um, it, the problem is is that the more people you direct you know the more production line the film is becoming and, and because you're trying to create the whole thing quicker um, you do get less time to do the animation and, and really that's the bit I really enjoy sometimes by about four o'clock I'd get to do some animation myself which, which was, was great, really. I was sometimes undisturbable for about two hours in each day, which, which was bliss. <laughs> Ultimately, it's a team effort, from the initial idea, through the design, model making, set construction, lighting, animation and editing, to the final print. In live action, you can take and retake and retake again, um, and you've got lots of, lots of options to keep reshooting. In animation, this is the main thing that we really try and avoid. Um, it's really, you've got, you've got one stab at it and you try your damnedest to, to get it first time. For the animator to then have to go back and do that again is, is quite heartbreaking. At the heart of the characterizations of Wallace and Wendelin are the voices of Peter Salis and Anne Reed. Finding uh, Wendelin was a very difficult job because it had to be somebody that kind of complemented and, and fitted into that style. And, and, uh, I found that it wasn't so much knowing exactly what I wanted, but I knew what I didn't want. <laughs> and, but I, it was only, you know, seeing uh, Anne Reed in, in uh, Victoria Wood's show that I, I thought, that's her, that, that's the, she is Wendelin. <laughs> <laughs> and she was perfect, you know. Wallace and Gromit are uh, my babies and such a personal style to me. Um, you, you know, I, I think the animators have done incredibly well to actually you know, work in a consistent style and, and work together. You know, looking at it, you can't see the joins. You know, you can't tell that, you know, sometimes in the film there is a different animator on, you know, seven shots, consecutive shots, um, and you can't see the joins, which is a great achievement. Shooting stop frame animation using models is surprisingly similar to shooting live action. In both cases, subjects and locations have to be lit and camera movements carefully planned. The basic look of the film is, of course, created by the camera work and the, the lighting, which has a very specific and stylized look to it, which I, I think hasn't really been done in model animation before. 
for each animator, we'd have to have a couple of conversations where we'd talk through the action and make sure that I was communicating what I wanted enough and that they were understanding what was required enough. And, and to, it, 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 really, it was a bit like working with actors in, in that it's a case of seeing what they could bring to it and, and seeing how they understood the part as well. 65,000 individual work hours and 625 shots later, the film is at last ready and Wallace and Gromit are due for a well-earned rest. When I see them on the covers of magazines and what have you, I, I feel quite proud of them, you know, that they've got... You think of them as living, as, as they've got their own life. 